go! Hello, I am Maggie Bain, and I will be telling the incredibly true story of Paul Charles Morphy, worldwide chess champion. Uh, Paul Charles Morphy was born into a comically wealthy family. His father and his uncle didn't have much to do because they had so much money, so they chose to play chess all day. Eventually, little eight-year-old Paul Charles Morphy, he learned how to play chess just by watching his father and uncle, which is pretty impressive. By the time he was 12, a traveling Hungarian uh, named Johan Vahansberg, which was probably not his name, <laughs> He came to visit young Paul Charles Morphy. He persevered and actually won over the crowd and won the game. He, he looked at Johan and said something probably cool, like, uh, hey, Johan, checkmate, or like, hey, Johan, I'm hungry for victory, and then won. When he came on Spring Hill College's campus, like, it was crazy. One day, a man came up to him, a serious man, uh, his name was John, probably, and, uh, he, and he said, hey man, I got something crazy to show you. And he took him to Stewart Field, in fact, which at the time was being used for a front for an underground board game gambling ring. Other board games like uh, Shoots and Ladders, uh, Monopoly, and he opens another room, and there in the back is the chess room. So John turns to Paul, and it's a very intense situation, and he said, hey man, what do you think? And pulled John close to him, and he said, hey man, checkmate. So this led to an intense administration raid, and they came in and they were like, hey man, this, this is a, Raid! And in a much more intimidating way than that. People were pushing each other out of the way. It was crazy. And in the scuffle, John, Paul's dear friend, was like, you know, shivved or something. So he fell down and he's dying. So Paul looks up at him, I mean, looks down at him because John's the one that's dying. And he says, yeah, you're dying so. Are you okay? And John's like, no, I'm pretty not okay because I'm dying. So he says, listen, Paul, just promise me one thing, man. Don't give up the game, Paul. And his head like rolls over and he dies and Paul's holding his friend in his arms and he's like distraught and it's very sad, but he got taken away by pub safe after that. The entire Underground gambling ring was, was destroyed at that point, dismantled, and Paul was a little bit lost for a while. So he decided to take up law. But as it turns out, he was an incredibly bad lawyer. After a long and horrible law career, in which he probably should have just been playing chess still, uh, he eventually died in a bathtub. So. On the top of his game at the age of 12, came to Spring Hill College to participate in an underground board game gambling ring and died in a bathtub. True story. Hi, my name is Rebecca Marroquin and welcome to DIY, Dorm It Yourself. Do you have a big mess in your apartment or in your dorm? You can use these to organize it. The first tip we have for you is showing you how to hang up your scarves, belts, and ties. 
you're going to want to get a regular hanger and attach shower curtain rings or hooks to them. You can then hang your scarves, belts, and ties from them. You can easily place a hanger in your closet, saving you a ton of space. An easy way to organize your clothes in a drawer is to place them upright. This gives you more space and allows you to see what you're pulling out each day. Are your snacks scattered all over your dorm or apartment? Our last tip is a makeshift pantry. You can create this by using a clear over-the-door shoe organizer and placing your snacks inside. You can then hang the organizer on the back of any door in your dorm or apartment. Maybe we can't help you organize your life, but these three tips are sure to help you organize your living space. I'm Rebecca Marroquin and this is DIY, Dormant Yourself. Every year, dozens of students fall victim to forgotten ID. It might happen to you. Shoulda brought a friend. A message from students everywhere. ¿Dónde está Sofía? ¿Quién? ¿Dónde está Sofía y la señora en el bosque? Están en la cama. Deben estar durmiendo. Estaban cansadas. <laughs> ¿Quién? No sé. El fuego de las iglesias. ¿Quién? No sé. El fuego de la biblioteca. ¿Quién? No sé. El fuego de la hospital. ¿Quién? Yo no sé. Popo Pedro. Lo siento. so much at stake with this answer. In Bora Bora, in a little hut. I'm here to ask everyone. Hi, I'm Carrie Ebanks, and this is On The Spot. Some days, we're just not feeling it. I'm here to ask students what's their best excuse for skipping class. I think my go-to excuse would be I ate something bad in the calf. I think everyone can relate to that. My best excuse for missing class, um, not sleeping the night before that I'm sick. <laughs> the best excuse I've had for missing a class was that my dorm room flooded. I got contacted by an acting agency, so I had to leave campus, sorry. Um, if it's Mardi Gras, I'm going on an immersion trip with campus ministry. <laughs> the other day I skipped theology, and because I just didn't want to go to class, and Doc Wilson actually stopped me outside of class and was like, hey, where you been? And I told him that I overslept when I really just didn't want to go to class. All right, I skipped class last Friday and told my professor that my kid, my paddle broke on my canoe, on my Spring Hillian canoe, and I couldn't paddle to class. I missed my very first class this morning, actually, so I'd never missed class before until now. And I just woke up this morning really late and just didn't feel like getting ready or going to class, so I missed my very first class today. Hi there, I'm William Conrad. When I miss class, I usually email my professor and say, I'm sorry, I won't be able to make it to class today. But when I do make it, I'm there. Uh, my best excuse for missing class is when mother calls and says I have to come and fold the laundry. Uh, I try not to touch her delicates. Uh, my best excuse for missing class is when my dad calls me and wants to have a WWE reenactment of SmackDown from 2014. Uh, my best excuse for missing class is because I'm beating my father in a push-up contest and he still has never let it go, so he tries to challenge me all the time. My best excuse for missing class is, well, 
I just don't want to go. My best excuse for missing class is, you know, sometimes it's sunny at the beach and other days it's rainy. And I just open the door and decide I don't want to go. My best excuse for missing class is when, uh, my, <clears throat> my best excuse for missing class is when my roommate's acting like a nerd, so I have to go out and rent lockers so I can stuff him in so he stops acting like such a nerd. Reporting for Badger Block, I'm Carrie Ebanks. Every year, dozens of students fall victim to lost IDs. It might happen to you. There aren't any pillows on the street. A message from students everywhere. And now, your student feature presentation. Beautiful day. I just, I just don't get why you won't ever let me drive. Uh, really? Yeah. You don't get you, it? You get to drive all the time, and you get to look cool in front of all the girls, <laughs> and here I am. Here I am. Because just, I'm, just responsible. I'm, I'm responsible. I'm a responsible adult. No, I you're am, not. Yes, I look, am. Look, this is how it goes. I'm the brains. You're the bronze. No, That's just no, how it is. no, 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 no. I mean, I, this is absolutely ridiculous why you won't let me drive. No, it's not. That's it's, selfish. It's, it's a valuable... You're a selfish partner. I'm trying You're to teach you You're a selfish partner. You, you are a what? selfish you know partner. Fine, fine, fine. Let's do it. Well, it's about time. Okay. It's about time. Fine. Selfish. All right, so the big pedal makes it go, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, mm. yeah. All right, now listen, it's in park, mm. all right? Park. So that means that, all right, so we're stopped. That's how you stop it? Correct. Okay, okay, okay cool. All right. Now you're gonna press the brake down, which is this pedal right here. So not not the one that makes it go. No, not that one. Okay. Oh, okay. Help us. Okay, so you're gonna press this down, mm. and then you're gonna be. Good yeah, I'm to just go. gonna do it. All right. Now be uh, careful now. Okay. The, the brakes are very sensitive. The brakes are? Yes. Okay. Okay. That pedal is very okay. sensitive. Okay. Right. I'm dri Okay, I'm driving. Yeah. I'm driving, and I think I'm doing all right. Squirrel! Ah! <laughs> ah! Yeah, Officer Gomez uh, losing his eyesight was a real detriment to the force. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, bad things happen to good people. But, uh, but upside, you know, we now have a puppy named uh, Officer Babs. Yep. Uh, he's going to assist Officer Gomez here as a seeing eye dog. Um, you know, a real nice addition to the force, you know. Downside, you know, Gomez is blind. Because you know, of you. No, not because of me. Yes. Not because of me. Yes. Because you did not take the correct safety protocol when you were in the golf cart. That's and what not is that? my fault. And what is, what is the correct safety protocol? Seatbelt on. Hand. There, there are no seatbelts. Uh, uh, a time with you. But upside, we now have a dog. Uh, He's both uh, yeah. physical and emotional support yeah, for yeah. me in my time of Yeah, Beth yeah. is a cutie. Beth is a cutie. Hey, hey brother, how you doing, man? Hey, how you man. doing? Stay safe. Stay safe. Hello. Hello. Uh, well, yeah, you know. I, it, you know. But you know what? New dog, new officer. I take that as a win in a day in the world of cops, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He eats a lot. Yeah, he does. But he doesn't know any tricks, uh, which is kind of weird. So this uh, is, he's a part of the wicked trick. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. It's kind of like the daredevil. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I, uh, like all my senses. Look at these sick guys. I, Look at I these. can't see anything. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you could. Like echo <sighs> How's it going, fellas? How's it going? Ha <laughs> ha. What do we got here? Oh, yeah. What do we got here? We got the guard dog. Just grilling, here. huh? Yeah. Grilling? Yeah. Where we oh, go? Sounds like some pretty good Where meats, huh? Yeah. yeah. Huh? What Where kind of meats you got here? We gotta call about some arson. We gotta call about some arson. I don't know. Yeah, dude. I smell yeah. trouble. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. this doesn't smell good. Didn't, didn't seem like he cooked it very well. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 All right, we're gonna have to take you guys in for some questions. Oh, no. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Y
Get him, get him, Ernie. Yeah. yeah. Hey, slow down, slow down. <laughs> you sick <laughs> You think running from the cops is cool, man? Huh? Hands behind your back. Hands behind your freaking. Hey, shut up, man. Hey, don't resist the rest. Give me your hands. Give me your freaking hands, man. <laughs> Buddy, come on, buddy. Babs, where you at? Come on. Oh God, is this a wall? Well, um, yeah. Just, uh, just couldn't, just couldn't, just couldn't get my guy. Couldn't get him. He was shifty. He was, he was pretty agile. That one. You didn't catch your guy. Uh uh. I, yeah, you did. Nope. I heard you tackle him. Nope. I heard his muffled scream. Nope. Are you uh, serious? Yeah. Uh, um, he just kind of turned the corner on me. What's that smell? Nothing. Don't lie to me. Nothing. You know, uh... Is he lying to me? Nope. Nope. You know what they say, uh, you know? You can't catch them all sometimes. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. X gonna give it to you. Wait for you to get it on your own. Got this Christmas tree. It's February, Jim. I, I... I don't know what to do. Ooh, oh, that's I'm too far. Yeah, too far. Come on. Come on. Yeah. That's why you can't not allow it back in the driving range anymore. Yeah. Hmm. You know what else happens, Jim, when you leave a Christmas tree? No, don't do it. The leaves. No. The leaves. No. Start to fall off, Jim. Huh? The leaves start to fall off and start getting trimmed. When you leave a Christmas tree out past Christmas. How long has it been plugged in for? For a long time. Are, are you serious? You're wasting energy. You're wasting energy. There are what happened people to going green? without electric. You think Thomas Edison died for this? No. You think Thomas Jefferson died for this? Teresa you, leaves in 10 minutes. Do you, think, ah! do, you, do you think that George Washington died for this so you could keep your Christmas tree up all day? Here's your saber. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it.